My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. My pleasure. This is, I'm in Indonesia, so we are like 12 hours apart, and it's my midnight right now. So uh, good morning to you. Good night to me. Uh, I am Mina. I am a mentor for women and women-led businesses. And um, my introduction can never be short because I, my background is very diverse. I'm Indian, born in Indonesia, a lawyer, and then morphed to and, um, take on business development, sales, marketing. And now I mentor women and women-led businesses. So listen, I know when it comes to female entrepreneurship, we don't want to generalize, but there are some challenges that female yep. entrepreneurs face a lot more when they're trying to get into the workplace and business and opportunity. What are some of the challenges that you see and possibly giving us some remedies? Uh, in my experience dealing with women, I find that the biggest challenge actually is the lack of self-confidence. Because when it comes to women working with and expanding their companies, for example, so when women do their projections, they tend to be very conservative, which means that it's very difficult to attract investors. Whereas men, on the other hand, they are actually very good with projections, plus some, they inflate it. In, uh, and women feel like they want to just be realistic. That's one. Second, I think more women suffer from imposter syndrome. So even if their business grows larger than what they had expected, they just somehow feel they're not worthy. They feel like maybe this is not me. And then they just don't take compliments very well. And by doing so, we actually get in our own way. So I find that the biggest challenges women face is things that we need to be first switching internally before we talk about the battles that we want to have externally. That's awesome. But do you see a trend of more female entrepreneur coming into the marketplace? Because I feel like that. I feel like there's a lot of uh, the, the, the female and the woman empowerment is definitely in the works. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. It's there. Absolutely. I, see it, I feel it. And it's going on. Is it the same over there? Absolutely. In fact, in Indonesia, we have so many female entrepreneurs. Before I quit my job at my board level, we had 12 uh, board members and there were three women. I mean, that's not a lot if you come to think, but ha having said that, it wasn't something that people found was different. And then some of the largest companies in Indonesia have female CEOs as well. And here, because we are quite divided in terms of um, economy, more than 60% of people live below the poverty line, sadly. And if you see the trend, whether it doesn't matter which class, ultimately, most of the women are working women. So it's not something that people feel is very rare. Here, it's very accepted, and it's uh, women are empowered, and women are very well respected. I agree with that. I mean... I, I, I mean, there are some industries that I feel like females will do a lot more when it comes to design, graphics, life coaching, when it comes to like mentorship, there's a lot that a female can bring into the table that maybe a male will not even just, will not even have those set of skills from just like, you know, from their background. So to me, it's like, why not? It should, that should be the case. You know, yeah. that doesn't mean guys can't do the job, you know, but to me, it's like, why not? Like anytime yeah. I want to do a design for a website, I'm not like, let's get some females yeah. looking at this. What do they, what do they think? Does yeah. it resonate? Is it good? Do the colors, you know? So to me, it's like, to me, it just makes sense. Why not? Yeah. It's a lot of it is also, I have to admit, it's a lot. Of, I mean, a lot has to do has to do with our own predisposition. But having said that, there's a lot of conditioning and this conditioning is so subtle that we don't even realize it. So growing up, for example, for myself, I grew up in a family where we have seven uh, girls and one boy and I'm the fourth. So I'm the first one who actually uh, made the way to get an education and I went overseas to get an education. Now, during the time I went to get over, to go overseas to education, I wasn't even encouraged. In fact, I was discouraged because there was no one in my family, not even the men who had gone overseas to get an education. But in my case, I looked around me and I saw the women and I thought, this is not the life I want. I want to live an empowered life. And by that, I mean not just, and, and, I, and I never compare men to women because I think that's a futile conversation 
men and women are different. We need to be co-elevating. We need to be joining hands. And it's not a competition. Yes, we should have equal rights, but we really should actually just be joining hands, help each other, support each other in growing. So in my case, I wanted to be empowered, not as opposed to a man, but empowered to be the creator of my own destiny, not because I wanted to be someone who conformed to conditioning. So going back to your point earlier about, you know, whether women are better at some jobs or men are, honestly speaking, I think a lot of it has to do with what we've been told since we were kids. And I am very, very, very fortunate. I think ever since I was a kid, I was much more, I tapped into my conscious mind more than anything else. So I kept looking at what was happening around me and I'm always made conscious decisions that this is what I want to be and this is what I don't want to be. And so sadly, most people, they go through their life without even thinking twice about what is it that they want or don't want to be. They just allow themselves to live by default. And then suddenly they wake up one day and it's not the life they want. Yeah, you definitely need to be working on that consciousness subconsciously. You got to you got to put in the universe what you want. If, Absolutely. I mean, if you don't have a plan, our society has a plan for you. It's just that yes. that plan may not be pleasant to you and it might not yes. be something that you want. So we talk yes. about that all the time that, you know, it, your life needs to be by design. You got to be yes. intentional with your life. If you're not, that may not work. So here's my other yeah. question. You talked about self-worth. What are a couple of yeah. things that individuals, male and female, that could do, that could elevate and get that mindset that they are worth it, that they do deserve it? What are a couple of elements that they could improve on? Okay. Um, obviously, it's a very long conversation, but I'm going to try and make it really short in terms of making it very practical. I think a lot of us grow up with, first of all, we have to understand we are constantly evolving we are not always the same so the interesting thing is when we are kids we are told things like oh you are too clumsy or you're too stupid or you're too whatever we grow up believing that to be the truth that's the first thing so i would say question what is it that you think you are and is it something that some someone labeled you and you just took it as the truth you know that's one thing i would say Second thing is when people say that I'm not worthy or worthy about something, I would always say, just look at who you are as a person. If you are somebody who wants to be able to achieve A, and I, the example I use all the time is, you can't say you want to fly to Italy. Well, of course, now you can't fly, but um, you can't say that you want to fly to Italy, but then go to the airport and buy a ticket to Bali and then wonder, why is it that I'm not in Rome? The reason you're not in Rome is because you did not take the relevant action steps to get yourself to Rome. And so if people actually just looked at who they are and see they are actually just a series of habits and a lot of these habits are not things that they are conscious of. So I, I give you an example, practical example. Now during lockdown, a lot of people are at home and some people obviously have the flexibility to work whenever they want. In my case, when the lockdown happened two months ago, I am not somebody who's used to being at home and having to work from home. So suddenly when the lockdown happened, for the first couple of days, I was very anxious. And I was wondering why was I anxious? And when I sat down with myself and I figured it out, I realized that the reason I was anxious was because I felt my wings had been clipped, you know, having that independence, having the freedom. And so I asked myself within this context, now, what choices do I have to move from the victim mentality to feeling empowered? One of the things that I did, I did many things. One of the things I did was to make sure I continued with my routine. Now, a lot of people use this time as an excuse to mop around, to just eat more, to binge watch Netflix, and then to drink more. But I decided I wasn't going to be that person. So you have to really make a decision. What do you want to be? And then reverse engineer. In my case, I was very clear. During the lockdown, I'm going to be the most productive I've ever been. And this is not a waiting period. People think like life is going to happen after this. No, this is life. This is life. You can't explain the three months, four months that you actually wasted away. You have to maximize your life. So the thing I would say, the third thing, obviously, is decide what you want to be and reverse engineer. 
stop thinking about who you are, putting yourself in compartments, labeling yourself, because we all evolve. We keep growing. So don't label yourself. I have a client who used to say she was an introvert. And as I work with her, I, I, three months later, I asked her, I said, have you noticed that now you actually can speak up and you have all these? And she's like, oh, yeah, I can. I said, you see, you just labeled yourself as an introvert and you kind of stopped yourself from moving. But the fact is, we are always evolving. I agree with that 100%. Listen, I have been very, very productive during this lockdown. I think I worked harder during the lockdown than I've done Amazing. while I wasn't on a lockdown. So I want this lockdown to be finished so I can go back and relax a little bit more <laughs> because I'm doing That's more. So definitely, I'm ready for the lockdown to be over. But you want to know something? To me... There are no accidents in life. Everything happens for Absolutely. a reason. And if we're not Absolutely. taking this opportunity to reflect on what's going on and how we could improve our lives, like to me, lockdown was the best thing. I get to do walks me with too. my wife and my daughter. I get to go Amazing. home, you know, five, six in the afternoon and have a, you know, have a dinner as a fan. So a lot of things have changed and it's a good thing because you could experience it. And if these are things that you like to have, after the lockdown, after this whole thing, like, you know, it will never go away. We'll, we'll be with COVID-19 yeah. for our lifetime. It will be yeah. here. It's not going to go away. But at least you know what you want and what you don't want. So now... Did you like consciously... I have a question. Did you consciously... So you said that you have been now doing more going for walks with your wife and your daughter. Did you consciously pick certain routines so that you kind of like uh, make up for whatever's happening right now? Definitely. And I figured, and, and here's the funny part. When we did it the first time, I looked at it. I said, I like this, but I need to find a way to make this into a routine. Yeah. So then yeah. I was like, okay, can I do this at work? Can I, can I do this at the office? Can I change this to this? Can I let these people know that these hours I'm not available? So my mind went, is like, I like this. How do I incorporate this into my lifestyle? What are the Absolutely. what are the pros? What are the cons? Like let let's let's do the analysis. So as we were walking, yeah. I was paying attention to my surrounding, but at the same time, I was already strategizing how to incorporate That's this. Good. Because it, it's if you want it, you can have it. As long as you don't violate yeah. other individuals' rights, you can have it. But you just gotta plan it. So what I realized. Yeah. There is no walking the park with my wife and kid on my vision board. So that to me right there was a challenge. So when it happened, amazing, and I it, amazing. I looked at it, I said, okay, so there is a challenge over here. I like doing that, but why didn't I think of that before so I could put it on my vision board so I could manifest it into its physical, you know, equivalent. So I was like, okay, there are things out there in universe that I want and I enjoy and I like that I'm not a verb. So now I need to be open-minded to new experiences and new activities because they could be um, one or two. Either I like them or I don't like them. But if I like them, I can incorporate them in my life. If I don't like them, now I know I really don't like them. You know, so now I don't have to do that. So that's that's the way I coped with the COVID-19. I don't know, did we lose her? I think we just lost her. Let's give her a moment. Let's see. Okay. Sorry, I kind back. of like lost you. I, yeah, sorry, lost you for a bit. Yes, I okay, really so loved what you said. I really loved what you said about uh, that not being part of the vision board. And then you decided that you were going to change your life so that it could be part of your life. It's fantastic. I mean, it, this it, is it, the thing. Listen, people... Change is the only constant. And this is what I've been trying to tell people. And I'm not the first yeah. one who said that. I think Albert Einstein, like somebody yes. famous said that like, Many, many years ago, like change is the only constant. Get and used yet to it we and go resist change. And yet we resist change. That's the interesting thing about human nature, you know, and also a number of other things. Like we say life is short. You hear that people making that statement all the time, but no one is actually thinking about how can I make sure that my life is, I live my life in such a way that whether tomorrow comes or not, I will not live with regret. And you know, that's why COVID, no COVID, at the end of the day, you really have to think about how you want to live your life. I agree with that. Listen, how do people find you? 
So people can contact me through my Instagram, Strong and Shine. I also have my email address is mina at strongandshine.com. And um, my website is strongandshine.com. So everything is strong and shine. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule. My being pleasure. With us. Hopefully we'll be able to get to do more and looking forward and collaborating with you in any way, shape or possible. Likewise, likewise. First of all, I also want to say thank you to you for doing what you do because I think so many people need a voice of reason and understand that you know business and entrepreneurship is not just about money. It's about the mindset and it's about you know being aligned with who you are as a person so thank you for doing what you do thank you so much talk to you soon stay safe you too bye-bye bye-bye